Well, my heart knows me better than I know myself, so I'm gonna let it do all the talk. Woo Woo I came across a place in the middle of nowhere with a big black horse and a cherry tree. Woo Woo I felt a little fear upon my back. I said, don't look back, just keep on walking. Woo Woo And the big black horse it looked this way and said, Hey lady, will you marry me? Woo hoo. But I said no, 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 no. I said no, no. You're not the one for me. And I said no, 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 no. And I said no, no. You're not the one for me. Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out The Black Horse and the Cherry Tree by the amazing Katie Tunstall. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through all of the chords and the strumming and that sort of stuff. If you want to get into the looping thing, the way that she played it on Jules Holland with all of those really cool vocal loops and guitar loops going on, then you want to check out a lesson that she gives you on it. Just have a look around on the interweb thing. Uh, sure, some of you heard of that internet, you know, if you just type in like Katie Tunstall guitar lesson, uh, you're sure to find it. And uh, it's really interesting the way that she approaches a really talented uh, girl. Great new record as well, you might want to check out. Uh, it's been a few years ago that this song was released. But anyway. So the big deal really, I guess, is the strumming. That's the part that most people are kind of going to struggle with. The chords are fairly simple. Uh, chords for the verse, we need an E minor chord and a B7 chord. Fairly easy to change between them if you use your second and third finger for the E minor. You want to just keep your second finger down as an anchor. Third finger moves down a string, first finger goes on and little finger goes on and you've got your V7. So it's a fairly easy change to get those two chords. So the tricky bit here is really the strumming. Easiest thing here again if you've got the songbook it's already written out for you, but you're definitely going to be writing down your 16th note strumming. So one eander, two eander, three eander, four eander. You want to write that out and write in your downs and ups where the strums happen. It's the easiest way to get this kind of strumming pattern down. So what we got is this. And there's quite a few variations during the tune, so this is kind of like a, an approximate kind of, sim not simplified, but the kind of the general one. So if you start with this and then kind of let yourself loosen up to it a little bit, you'll find some little variations. If you want to cop exactly the ones on the record, you're just going to need to listen to it closely and figure out exactly what she's doing. But this is the right one most of the time. So. The big deal here is when you're hitting the chord and when you're muting the chord, and the mutes are as important as the actual strums because they're kind of helping to find the rhythm. So we're, what we got here is on the E minor, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, down. Now the count, that's just on the first chord there, the E minor. The count is one E and a two and three and four. One E and a two and three and four. And doing this kind of thing where you're counting along or playing it really slowly with a muted chord is a really good way of making sure you got that rhythm right. So I'm going to slow it down even more. It's just this first bar. One E and a two and three and four. One E and a two and three and four. Down. Up, down, down, down. Now, can you see that I'm keeping that hand moving still for now, right? Because it's really important that you're kind of locking into that groove. It's really, it's a big deal, right? Getting that kind of hand moving continuously is kind of, it locks you in. It, got, it gives you the, the correct feeling. If you don't do that and you don't do the right strumming pattern, like you don't do the downs and the ups in the right place, it'll always feel a little bit kind of wobbly. Right, so get that first bar down first. So one E, a two and three and four. One E and a two and three and four. One E and a two and three and four. One E and a two and three. And once you got it, now what I'm doing is I'm hitting between. Once I've opened up the chord now, 
<laughs> and I'm using the outside of my hand here to hit, touch in on the guitar strings. So I'm going down strum, outside of the palm is muting on the strings, and then I'm strumming up. Right? Down, hit, up, mute again. You need to practice that slow again. Down, mute, up, mute. Down, mute, up, mute. Get used to that feeling. So those last two are played together without a mute between, but otherwise you're muting with the outside of your hand there. Down, mute, up, down, mute. Down, down, mute. Down, mute, up, down, down, mute. Down, down. I said one of the downs instead of mutes, but hopefully you've got the pattern right. I'll do it one more time real slowly. Down, mute, up, mute. Down, mute, down, down. Mute. That's the pattern, but remember the rhythm. And you just want to practice up that one bar first. And it's really important that you kind of get the, the flow of it, you get used to the muting and stuff before it gets too complicated. Right? Then we're into the second bar, which goes B7 for the first half of the bar and then E minor for the last half of the bar. So on the B7, we got, which is almost identical before, down, mute, up, mute, down, up, mute. Down, mute, up, mute, down, up, mute. Ah. One E and up, two E and up, three. Four. One E and a two and three. Ah, now it's really hard to count this one. One E and a two E and a three. Four. One E and a two E and a three. Four. One E and a two E and a three. Four. Down, mute, up, mute, down, up, mute. And then we're back to E minor. Down, down, up. Down, mute, down, up, mute. Just that second bar. B7, E minor. Down, up, down, up, down, down. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. It's a lot easier to play than it is to speak it out loud. It's a bit of a bugger, this one. But anyway, it's a great tune, right? So once you've got each bar settled, and like I said, writing it down is the easiest way to get these kind of patterns down. You want to start practicing it real nice and slow. So like three, four. Now some of you might notice my left hand as well. After I play the minor I go to the mute. I'm letting my fingers just fall onto the guitar a bit in case, just in case the mute doesn't work 100%. It's kind of like my backup plan to make sure that the guitar is going to stay nice and quiet. And it does kind of help a little bit because I'm sure that if I didn't do it there would be occasionally strings kind of ringing out. So try and get used to the habit of after you're doing the mute there that you're relaxing your fretting hand as well and it'll just be kind of you know a secondary muter for you, you know, helping it out. Again, with all of these patterns, once you can do it real slow, you'll find the build up to full speed relatively easy. The hard part is getting it right, not getting it fast, most of the times for kind of this kind of rhythm pattern. So doing lots of practice. Just working on the groove and making sure you got it. And of course, remember that there are variations there. So I'd recommend getting it down exactly like that first. And then if you choose to, you can start to kind of loosen it up a little bit and not be too fast about getting it exactly right. So uh, once you've got that strumming pattern sorted out, then you're just going to be adding some muted parts while the vocals are going on. Now, it's not too tricky if you're just doing this. <laughs> I can't 
sing the actual song very well because it's a girly vocal and I sound really terrible when I do it. Uh, it sounds great when Selena does it or Katie, but not me. Uh, but really, you can if you're just kind of strumming along there, it doesn't matter if it follows the vocal a little bit. You know, it's okay. It's, it's fine to do that. You want to try and keep a little pulse and it's got a groove and you don't want it speeding up and slowing down too much. But really, you're just trying to get the... really just kind of getting it in that pocket trying to groove it a little bit and you definitely want to get that down before you start singing right it's going to be really difficult if you're trying to sing right away while you're still trying to get your groove together so uh, you will find it loosens up well if it, when I try and sing a tune like this uh, it does tend to kind of loosen up automatically when I start singing because my concentration's going into the singing part and less on the guitar part so it's just gonna a little bit more uh, loose sounding but that's that's cool you know this kind of tune it works great you know um, and like I said, if you want to get into the whole looping thing, that's a whole other story. And uh, you want to go and check out the lesson uh, by Katie if you want to do that. So uh, next part, the chorus pattern. So the chords in the chorus, we start with an E minor to a D. Then you just, from your D chord, you just lift off your third finger and you end up with a D6. Right, that's the name of the chord. It's real easy though. It's just D chord, lift off your third finger, you got a D6 to a C major 7, which is the same as a regular C chord, but you lift off your first finger. Right? So E minor, D, D6 to C major 7. E minor, D, C9 to E minor. Right? C9, nothing on the thicker string, then 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 3rd fret, not really hearing on the record too much the thinnest E string, but I think I can hear it a bit in there sometimes live, so you can choose to put it in there or not. The most important parts of the chord is that middle bit. Right, so nothing, third fret, second fret, third fret, third fret, and then either open on the thinnest string. Some people play this chord using a little bar with their third finger there. So in that case, you'd be doing third, second, third, third, third. Little bit, most kind of beginner guitar players struggle with that a lot more to do the little bar thing. That's why I'm recommending maybe using first finger, uh, second finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger. Just concentrating on those middle four strings. So again, that sequence E minor, D. Lift off the third finger to D6, then C major 7. E minor, D, C9 to E minor. And the sequence again, E minor to D, D6 to C major 7, E minor to D, C9, and then we're back to the kind of the rhythm vibe. So as well as those chords being kind of interesting, we've also got some pretty full on strumming going on here in the chorus. So the pattern, if I do it real nice and slow for you just with the mute, is down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. I'm going to do it a lot slower now here, of course. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. One and two e and a three e and four e and a one and two e and a three e and four e and a. Really slowly with the count for those of you that are being good and writing it down. One and two and a three e and four and a down 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 up up down 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 up. Right, that's the pattern. Okay, let's do it. We're still with a mute, slowly through a few times so you can kind of get the feeling for it as well. So three, four.
So you're just doing it along like that with the mute is really, that's where it's at. That's where you're going to help get that rhythm, right? Bef before you even start thinking about the changes, because the changes kind of come in a funny spot here as well. So nice and slowly, make sure you get it right. Really concentrating on hand moving again, nice and evenly as you plan through it. Make sure you get it right first. Then you can start to introduce the chords. Now the weird thing here is that the chords are changing on the first up strum. So you've got down, 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 up. On that up is where the chords change. So E minor, straight to the D. Down, 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 D. Up, down, down, up, down. Down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. Down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. So each time where there's that chord change, it's happening on the up strum. Just a little bit kind of interesting feeling. It sounds great, you know, but for those of you kind of just figuring it out, that's why it's so important that you get that rhythm pattern sorted out before you try and add the chords in. So a bit slower, so E minor. D. D6. C major seven. E minor. D. C add nine, a C nine, E minor. Again, E minor, D, D6, C major 7, E minor, D, C add 9, back to the verse. Right? It's gotta, you've got to try and get it like that, nice and slow, before you're going... Just working on those things nice and slow, making sure you got them in the pocket first, and then starting to speed it up. You know, Again, a really good thing, those of you not doing it already, is playing along with the original recording and using one of those slow down programs. I use Transcribe, but you could use Kappa or Audacity or the Slow Downer, or there's loads of different software that'll help you do that. And uh, that way you kind of pick it up on the groove as well as actually playing it slower. So uh, this, you know, this song, just learn the parts first, make sure you got them down, then try and play along it 60%. Feels a little bit weird, but at least you'll be picking up the groove as well, because the groove is as important as actually just what the notes are and this particular strumming pattern. Um, hope you have a lot of fun playing this one. It's a crack and tune, and go and check out her new album, because I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but it's really, really good. And there was a crack and single that she played on that same Jules Holland show again, uh, just last week. Um, anyway, go and have a look for it. I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.